Well, this week, the Willia Junta Indigenous Housing Collaboration announced their launch of the exhibition to build homes that they say will celebrate both culture and environment and also withstand the increasing temperatures due to climate change while allowing families to thrive. Well, joining me live is Dr Simon Quilty, who has been a doctor in the Northern Territory for 20 years and is one of the co-founders. So Dr Quilty, thank you very much for joining us and good afternoon. So, yes, talk us through the launch and uh, certainly you've co-authored numerous papers on the impact of extreme health and heat on the First Nations people. Yeah, well, everyone in the Northern Territory is subjected to it. Uh, the difference in the Northern Territory is that um, non-Indigenous people generally have enough resources to build good houses, and Aboriginal people uh, have no resources and are incredibly poor. And so the current housing stock uh, and even the new builds that are being done uh, in the Northern Territory and remote communities is not only very expensive, but the design is very poorly performing in terms of its thermal properties. And so the launch uh, was here in Melbourne uh, over the weekend. Uh, uh, you can look it up at williajunta.org. Uh, we had 20 Warramunga people and a bunch of people from Central Arnhem Land who are all really excited about this project. The houses were co-designed with architects at Office, an architecture firm here, and Tropo. And uh, we came here to celebrate. There's models of, uh, of the houses and there's amazing artwork from the Tennant Creek Brio, which is a very exciting art movement coming out of Tennant Creek. Those artists donated those paintings because they themselves live in terrible conditions. In fact, one of the most important artists, Fabian Brown, lives in a tin shed with no insulation, no concrete on the floor and no power or water. And we do have some pictures from your website, I believe we're going to pull up, of some of the the old homes and some of them built a couple of years ago. These are the new ones. OK, well, let's start with the yeah. new ones. Um, tell us about these. Well, look, to start with, they uh, they will be highly thermally performing. Uh, but then, importantly, there's a lot of cultural aspects into, into this design. This is the first design in the Barclay that has actually been designed for culture. So there's lots of breezeways. Uh, Aboriginal people don't don't really like air conditioning, although in really hot weather, they don't have a choice. Uh, so they will be well insulated, uh, really open to ventilation, and they'll be designed for culture. So for instance, Aboriginal people in Tennant Creek have a strong preference for cooking on fires. Our outdoor kitchen, there's two kitchens, one for women and one for men. And uh, the outdoor kitchen has a fire that people can cook their kangaroos on whenever they want. Fantastic. I believe we're going to have a look at it again. And uh, as you said, like different rooms and um... We've got the old ones here. So explain to us, yeah, well, uh, if you don't mind, yeah. Yeah, that's not an old one. That blue one is two years old uh, and it, it is very poorly thermally performing. Aboriginal people complain that it looks like a prison. Uh, it is um, that these houses are incredibly overcrowded because there's not nearly enough houses in remote NT for communities. You can see the yard there. Uh, they compact the soil so you can't grow anything. You can't even dig a hole to plant a tree. Uh, the, the earth is so hardly compacted around the house. And, of course, to have a cool house in a place like Tennant Creek, you want a grassy lawn for your kids to play on. Um, uh, you can see the walls in the background there. They look like a prison. Uh, there's no airflow. And you can imagine 25 people living in a house like this when there is no air conditioning that works in the really hot weather. These houses become hotter on the inside than the outside after five or six days above 45 degrees Celsius, and they become uninhabitable, essentially, if people don't have the power to air condition. But because they don't come with air conditioning in the first place, uh, residents are forced to buy very expensive uh, window-mounted air conditioners from the local shop at Tennant Creek. So the current housing stock is really poorly performing. Um, we're, we're really hoping to work with the Northern Territory government to start getting this right. And after 20 years of experience as a doctor in the Northern Territory, the reason I'm going into housing is because no medicines are going to fix this problem. The problem in remote communities is terrible quality and design of housing. And we have a plan and we're going to fix it. And there's a lot of excited Warmonger people around. Mm -hmm. uh, they were, were all here in Melbourne yesterday. They're all... <laughs> Probably halfway between our springs and Tennant Creek now on a bus. There are the models there again for our viewers, so you can see the different, you know, areas, can't you? In terms of the uh, yeah, the so that, that, that one, yeah, and that 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 high vision uh, is mm. where the two houses will be located. So we've we've already got the land, and now we just need philanthropic support. So the artwork here today at the exhibition is available at williajunta.org. Uh, you can actually. Um, 
buy it through auction uh, and we're hoping to raise money. Any money that you spend on these amazing paintings will go into building better houses from Mr Norman Frank to Barula and Serena Frank to Barula to start with and that will be a demonstration home. And if we can build these houses cheaper than the Northern Territory Government can, then I think there'll be a very strong demand for this model. And do we know what sort of materials that you're looking at in terms of building these homes with? We're, we're in the process of deciding that at the moment. We're working with some extraordinary architects and some great engineering firms and we've got some other very um, serious backers behind us in terms of design and construction and materials. Uh, so that's all being decided at the moment. All right, yes, because we know obviously the supplying issue is, uh, uh, you know, with, with other homes certainly, um, you know, cost costing us a lot. But um, again, looking at new and, and uh, you know, new ways of, of building will be very interesting to see, um, you know, what, what comes up. And any timeline or what are we expecting? Um, you know? Look, we, it sounds like we've got some pretty significant philanthropic mm. support. We really hope that the government comes along as well. Uh, and we'd like to have these houses built within the next 12 months. And the reason is that climate change is making the weather extremely hot in places like Tombet Creek. Never experienced before temperatures up to 50 degrees Celsius. Um, and it is really dangerous for people. And there is essentially no houses that are well thermally designed in remote communities. And so there's a, an incredible urgency to rectify this problem immediately. In fact, it's shameful that we are in 2023 and we have this circumstance where Aboriginal people are effectively living pretty close to sub-Saharan Africa, well and truly under the red line. What has been the feedback with residents? They're very excited. It's real. It's optimistic, it's forward-looking, it's about putting control of housing in their hands and allowing them to design houses in ways that suits their family rather than houses that are very much like prisons and very, very hot to live in. Well, you certainly know the area well, being a doctor in the Northern Territory for around 20 years. So we look forward to hearing more. Dr Simon Quilty, thank you so much for your time. We'll keep you posted. Thank you very much. Thank you.